and we're going to start the actual loading process or reloading process. And well, actually, what we're doing is we're doing case preparation. I'll take each of these. Now, the first step is we're going to take one of these fired cases or we'll wipe it down. We're wiping it down for a couple of reasons. Number one is I'm actually using my fingers, especially on the neck and uh, shoulder. I'm feeling for any nicks. Uh, on these 8mm Mauser, pretty good sized case, you'd probably be able to see it. Some smaller cases you might reload, like the 556, you may not see it. And so just using your fingers, uh, you can feel uh, anything, and there's nothing wrong with this. This is good. The other reason why we're wiping it down is to remove any grit or dust that would otherwise uh, enter the dye body and start scratching the interior of that dye body. And once you've done that, you have kind of ruined that dye, and it's then time to buy another one. Uh, putting scratches on the on the case because you put scratches on the dye body um, isn't maybe the end of the world, but it could of course affect how well it actually resizes that brass. And so it's a very simple step, just wipe it down. Now once we have, you know, maybe filled up this loading block, the next step is to test for any abnormalities on the interior of the case itself. So I like to use this little transistor rod again. As you can see, I have bent this to a little L type shape. And I'm going to insert this into the mouth of the case and I'm going to feel along the inside and I'm turning it and getting it all the way down to the bottom of the interior of the case and I'm feeling for any nicks, small cuts. Uh, what might be a crack, and the cracks for a, what's called an incipient head fracture, that incipient simply means it's going to happen soon, head fracture, um, those head fractures start on the inside of the case. And so we're feeling with something like this, or take a paper clip, open it up, put a little bend to it, just like that. We're feeling down into this area, right here, this is the head, the web, and all that good stuff. Uh, we're feeling down into this area because that is where an incipient head case fracture is going to start. And we can detect it early by doing that. And it will never cause a problem. If you feel any sort of crack on the inside of the case, it's normally going to be here. But anywhere on the inside, you toss the case. It's done with. Now I have 40 cases that I wiped down and I inspected those things for any uh, case head fractures or incipient case head fractures. And as expected, nothing is wrong with these cases. They've only been fired once uh, it was factory ammo. And so I have, I like to keep two loading blocks. One I will fill up with cases that are on a certain step in the process. And then as I finish up that step, uh, they move over here and I keep going back and forth, back and forth. And for whatever reason, I like to keep the um, cases being prepared on my left side. Those things finished up go then to the right side. Now that that is all done, another thing that I did, and this is absolutely critical with reloading, especially brass cases with a bottleneck design like these, is we need to lubricate those things so they don't get stuck inside the die, which oftentimes will ruin the die, uh, and at least will ruin the case. Now once again, uh, I am using Hornady product. This is Hornady's One Shot Case Lube. This is not the same stuff I used earlier, which was Hornady One Shot Gun Cleaner and Dry Lube. This is different stuff. Don't mix and match them. This is case lube, and uh, you know what, as far as case lube goes, this is really some good stuff. I've had a little bit of problem with um, 
Uh, some case lubes, I, was, I tried out a different case lube not too long ago and it really wanted to dimple the um, shoulder of the case. And I've never had that problem before with anything. Now what I mean by that is looking right here. If we put too much lube on a case, we're going to get these little dimples that appear here and here and here, all the way around it. If you've done that, you have just ruined the case and hopefully you catch it after uh, just one or two cases because otherwise you'll ruin the whole batch and there's no way of fixing that sort of thing. It's just destroyed. So you toss them out. I've never had that problem with the Hornady one shot case loop. Um, and I, I put on, you have to put on enough case loop, but obviously not too much that it causes those dimples. And what I like to do is I will take this block, I'll set it down on the concrete floor or on a table, uh, tabletop some more, and I'll hit it in this direction, just like this. And then I'll turn it, and I'll hit it from this direction, same way. I'll turn it again, hit it again, and I'll mist this way, and this way, and then I hit it one more time from the top. And I'm trying to get just a little bit of lubricant uh, down into the inside of these uh, mouths. Then what you want to do is let this sit for just a minute or two, uh, maybe three, four minutes even, to let that lube dry just a little bit. If you don't let it dry, that can actually cause some of that dimpling as well. All's well. good again. At this point it's kind of like repeat the process. So I'm going to do that and then we'll come back and go to the next step. Alright, that's done. 40 cases, full length resized. And now what I want to do is I want to check what's called the case head diameter. Here's the case head. And I want to measure the diameter. Now as I said earlier, I have not loaded the 8mm Mauser before. So at this point it's time to pull out the reference. And uh, this is uh, RCBS uh, Spear Reloading Manual. This is number 10. This is old. I've had this for a long time. There's the pages for the 8x57 Mauser. What we're looking for here is this dimension. We see the head diameter, maximum head diameter based on SAMI standards is 0.470. So we're going to put our digital caliper on these cases and ensure that each one is less than or equal to 0.470. We actually anticipate it to be less than 0.470. Uh, if you are exceeding this number, a couple of things could be happening. Number one, it could be telling you something about the chamber in your rifle is oversized just a little bit. Could also be indicating that your brass is getting weak, and that's normally the case. Um, sometimes resizing it again will fix that problem, but it's only a short term thing. You should be thinking about cycling out that series of brass and going into and getting a new batch of brass. Now 8mm Mauser is an old cartridge. Uh, we want to preserve this brass in as good a shape as possible. It's an old rifle so I'm not going to be pushing this to high velocities and high pressures. We want to keep it at low pressures uh, but yet have uh, a nice round that's being created that's accurate certainly reliable and dependable uh, ammunition, but also something that's fun to shoot and uh, uh, just a nice, uh, nice bunch of ammo. So I got to bear all that in mind as we're crafting this stuff. We're going to go ahead, as I said, and measure this head diameter and see what we're sitting at.
So now I'm going to measure each of these. I'm not just going to sample it. I'm going to measure each of these. And I'm going to then note the maximum size for this batch of brass. And I'm going to track that over time. These cases all passed the test with flying colors. Maximum size was 0 0.465, 465 thousandths of an inch, giving us five thousandths of an inch leeway before it matches or starts to exceed the SAMI specs. So the next step in our reloading process is to test the overall length of these cases and to determine which cases need to be trimmed. What we're looking for is for each of the cases to be ideally exactly the maximum length. Now this is my Lyman easy case length gauge and it really is easy. I really like this tool and luckily enough for me there is a setting for 8 millimeter Mauser. So that's cool, makes it very easy. I don't have to use the uh, digital calipers to do this. Uh, we could do this otherwise. But when we're reloading, we want to be actually very meticulous, very careful, and very systematic how we're doing things. And uh, you know, we're going to run this up into here, and we see now that this case is just fine, fits in there not even snugly, it fits in there nicely. But these cases might be different. Feels about the same there. I'm going to test every one of them. And if we have some that are too long, that's okay. It's not an instance where you have to discard the case. All you have to do at that point is trim the case just a little bit. Boy, this is going easy. Not a one was too long. Nothing in this batch of ammo or this batch of cases needed any trimming. And that's cool. That happens, you know, uh, fairly frequently, especially with these um, rounds that are kind of mildly loaded. We won't have much growth in them. That's cool. We may start seeing some later on, second, third, maybe fourth firing. Now what I want to do is I want to wipe this down again. I'm removing the lube. I didn't remove the lube until now, till this point. And the reason why I do that is because if I have to trim, I want to leave the lube on. Um, you're going to be inserting the case into the trim die up into this area, and we certainly don't want to get it stuck at that point. You know, normally that wouldn't, wouldn't happen, but it certainly could happen. So I leave the lube on until I've gotten to this point. After this, what we're going to do is go to the case prep station. This is RCBS's case prep station. We're going to do a little bit of work on the primer pocket and the mouth of this case. We're going to put a nice chamfer and a little bit of a deburr on this uh, mouth case. Now the reason why we're going to deburr is that we might end up creating some burrs as part of the chamfering process. If we trimmed this case, well, we definitely got to do a much more substantial chamfer and deburr job on that case prep station. So I'm going to finish this part up and then I'll meet you at the case prep station. This is the RCBS case prep station. I've got it set up in five individual uh, stages or steps. First is where I'm going to brush out or clean out the primer pocket itself. We'll use this one. Secondly, if we are using military crimped um, cases, I need to remove that military crimp with this one. I use this with my 5.56 when I'm reloading 5.56. So I'm going to skip this step as it's not needed. Then I'm going to jump over to this uh, stage right here and it is a primer pocket uniforming uh, tool. 
And then I'm going to flip the case over and come over here. This is a deburr tool and a chamfer tool. Normally what I do is I'll deburr very quickly, a second or two right here, literally a second or two, come over here for chamfer, then quickly back to this one. Then lastly, I'll run the mouth of that case on this um, brush to get out any residue from the whole process that could have been caused by these. Now I've got a set of large primer and small primer um, equipment or tools for this. And right now it's set up for small primer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove I'm going to set it aside here. Grab the large primer tool. Thread it on here. There we go. Now I'm getting business. I like to wear these gloves. Uh, these are from uh, Harbor Freight. They're hardy tool gloves. Uh, they have a little rubberiness to it, kind of sticky stuff. And that gives me a bit of a grip on this, especially uh, if the primer pockets are a little bit tight and they need to be worked right here. It really uh, makes things a lot easier. Hit it there, skip that second step, go to this one. We want to make sure that we get it pressed all the way down to the top of this unit. That means that we are making the primer pocket as uniform as possible. They're all going to have the same depth to it. Now we're going to flip it over, deeper just a bit, chamfer. Chamfer is very important uh, for good bullet seating. Repeat the process. Until they're all done. You know, sometimes this Hornady brass, and particularly Hornady brass, will have a very tight primer pocket. And so when you place it here, it's going to almost want to snub this out. But it's pretty important to getting some nice consistent ammunition to uh, prepare this. There we go. And it's kind of a one-time thing. In other words, you prepare this primer pocket to have the correct depth the correct diameter and we probably shaved off a little bit on the uh, outside perimeter there to give it the correct diameter and certainly the correct depth. You do it once and that's really all you got to do during the life of this case. All right it's about time to give these eight millimeter Mauser cases a bath. These are all the once-fired cases, and as you recall, I have another set of 50 brand-new factory cases. Now, it's pretty tempting to put them all in here and, uh, and clean them up in one process, but I'm recommending against that. I don't like to do that because I like to keep count of how many rounds, how many times each of my cases have been fired. It's a pretty good indicator of the case life itself. And so since these are all once fired, I'm going to handle these all together. It's all Hornady brass. And my brand new Hornady brass is being treated completely separately. It'll go in a separate session of cleaning. That way I can keep track of this just a whole lot better.